I'm just going to go through um, 14 easy steps for how to perform this, and this is basically going through the technique that we're going to teach you guys today, um, hands on. So what we're going to do first is get your afferent out, and you want to give a couple of sniffs of the vasoconstrictor in both nostrils, um, and then wait a minute or two, and then maybe give another dose. And you can do the, the thing where you assess which nair is patent, more patent, and you can just do that by going like this and kind of plugging your nose. Mine, this side is more open today, so you'll pro I'll probably get intubated on the left today. Um, and then you can use your finger to dilate it up after you get a little bit more anesthesia. You don't want to do that beforehand. Yeah. He looks too gleeful in this picture, doesn't he? Somebody mentioned earlier that that wasn't an important step. I think that is really critical. If you, there was, I don't know if it was, I think it was you who had just had a really tiny opening and, and yeah, and if we stuck a tube in there, it would have just, there would have been a lot of cracking. You can feel this when you go in, if you don't, if you don't dilate up your own nares, um, you'll often kind of like hear cracking when you go in. Um, as you put the tube in, it's not terrible and you don't bleed necessarily. Um, but her, she had almost no space. And you can feel as you put your finger in, I usually use my little finger, as you put your finger in and just put some pressure, you can feel things open up. And over a couple minutes, you'll feel it really opens up quite a lot. Yeah. So if you don't do that, I mean, I guess the tube will do that for you, but. Probably after this step, that would be a better thing to do. Um, you want to get most of like the lion's share of your, your tube of cream. I think we've got five grams in each of these tubes and you want to try and get most of that in your most patent nostril. And then really just sniff it up as, as well as you would uh, a really good snot booger um, to, to get it up all the way through your nasal passages and back to your nasal pharynx, okay? Um, and pretty much, most of it. You don't always have to use all of it, but most of it will be used. And you just put it kind of at the opening of your nostril and just sniff it in. And patients are really good at this. It's surprising. They're like, what do you want me to do? Um, and then they're able to do it and they get pretty darn good anesthesia. Um, after that, I actually, and just let it kind of melt. No, you'll, you'll kind of feel like the roof of your mouth go numb and your teeth feel like they're numb on the side that you um, anesthetize. So, yeah. Uh, and then you'll, you'll get out your atomizer of the 4% aqueous solution. And what we'll do, this is after I think it's reasonable to do Mark's technique and do about half the tube on the, the side that we're going to prep and then the other half the tube maybe a couple of minutes later. And then we'll get our atomizers and kind of spray a little bit of the back of your tongue and the, the um, tonsillar pillars in your tonsils and those are kind of the gagogenic structures that you want to knock out. Um, hopefully you're getting the, the nasal pharynx with your um, insufflation of the cream, but you want to use the atomizer to get a little bit of that tissue that's in the back of your mouth. 
and then after you've gotten that, kind of give it a little rest, and then you angle the atomizer down, um, and try and get a quick hit of your um, laryngeal inlet, so your vocal cords and your epiglottis. You're not going to see it, but just kind of like bend the atomizer um, and aim it down there so you can get a little bit of anesthesia directed in that region. And while this is happening, you can have a, a 6.0 or a 6.5 tube that's sitting in a vessel of warm water. Um, what that does, like if you feel these tubes, they're pretty tough. And you don't really want to put that in your nose or your patient's nose. So just putting them in warm water makes them a lot more malleable and a little bit less painful and more tolerate, to tolerated a little bit better. And once that's warm and malleable, that's when you put just standard lubricating jelly on the outside of the tube. Um, then you want to place that endotracheal tube into your prepped nair. I think with this, kind of depends on what we want to do. It sounds like we're probably going to be um, just dilating with our fingers um, and just get that as dilated as you can. Try and push those turbinates out of the way. And we have NPAs if you want to do that, but it's just another thing that you're kind of putting in and out of your nose. If you feel like you, you can tolerate the tube, we can try loading the tube into your nose. And you can feel it as you're inserting it. Um, you'll feel it kind of go, 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 go. And then you kind of feel a little bit of extra pressure as it makes that turn going into the nasopharynx. And if you look on the tube, have your partner, you're, you guys are pretty much going to partner up when you do this, watch how deep the tube is going in. In most people, if you go in about 12 to 14 centimeters, it'll make that turn. And so when you put your scope in, you're effectively just looking directly at the vocal cords when you pop through the tube, OK? Um, and at that point, it's time to get your scope ready. And so you take your, I put a little bit of lube on it just so it goes through the tube a little easier. You don't necessarily have to. And you can have somebody else hold the endotracheal tube stable so it's not all bent and you have to get all um, out of place while you're, you're loading the, the scope in. And then remember as you're holding it, have your extra medication um, that you have attached to your atomizer put on the medication port. I think they have those also in the glide scopes. This is just one of the AMBU setups so that when you get a good view of the, the vocal cords and the epiglottis, you can do that one cc just over the, the inlet, let that drop on, and then just let it sit. You're, you'll probably cough a little bit, like Rob said, and that'll atomize the, the meds exactly where they need to go. Give it about a minute. It takes about a minute for the anesthesia to really kick in so that when you want to drive the scope through the cords, um, you're not going to have a cough reflex. So you put the scope in, you're starting to drive it down, and you're right, this is like the view you're probably going to have. Something just like this. If you've preloaded the tube and you're just popping out of the end of the um, endotracheal tube. And just things to think about as you're doing this. Um, some people talk about warming up the scope a little bit before you do this because it can have a little bit of fogging once you go from like a cold ambient air to like a warm human um, nasopharyngeal passage and oropharyngeal passage. So you can also, maybe put it in the, the warm water for a little bit or just let the scope be on. Just having the light on of the scope will have it warm up and avoid fogging because that's something that my partners have run into. They've had fogging and had some difficulty with the, the scope. So that's one of our troubleshooting techniques. And then everybody's going to have secretions. And we're not giving anyone glycopyrrolate or anything to dry those up. So you're going to have to deal with secretions. Because we're all awake, we should be able to participate. And if there's um, debris on your scope, the simplest thing to do if you have a compliant person working with you is to just ask them to swallow. When you have them swallow, that just like kind of closes the tissue along the scope and it clears off the scope. Um, if the patient is not super compliant, for future reference, what you can do is just touch the tip of the scope to the mucosa that you're next to, okay? Um, and that's, I think I need to re reorganize the the amount of these, the, the way that these flow, but just have that one cc available. And yeah, um, with the small caliber scopes, we don't have an oxygen setup, but to, as um, David said, to kind of atomize the medication, you can have this going with oxygen at two to four liters a minute hooked up to your um, suction port right there. 
And then it's just about driving. You just are right over the chords. You just advance the scope through the vocal chords and go down maybe two or three centimeters above the carina and railroad your tube. Um, and because this is going in our noses and it's a longer passageway than from the mouth down to the uh, vocal cords, pretty much, particularly because we're using smaller tubes, you're probably going to want to hub the tube and have the, the connector uh, abutting the nasal opening. And then as you bring the scope out, you can see exactly how deep you are as you're kind of pulling out. You should be seeing the carina when you just advance the tube and then pull the scope out. And as you do that, you'll see the vocal cords as you're pulling it out. It's just another confirmatory measure to be like, I'm in the right spot. Rings. I think this is just us driving down. And make sure that if you want the person to breathe through the tube, you inflate the cuff because it's, much, it's pretty difficult to breathe around this. Um, and when you have this tube in your nose and the scope in it, it's very difficult to, to breathe because you're, once you go through the vocal cords, you're cutting off their airway. So remember that you want to get that scope out once you've confirmed what things, don't, don't dally at that point. Pull the scope out, inflate the cuff, and then you're done. I think this is Rob. Um, the last time we did this, and this is one of our, our ultrasound fellows. So he's got the, the tube preloaded, and you can see down here, he just like popped through the tip of the endotracheal tube. He was right above the cords. And I think Rob had gotten like a decent amount of atomized lidocaine administered before we inserted the scope. So Bill is not doing any of the, the one uh, cc spray over the cords. You can see He's down in the trachea right now and just advancing that tube. What do you got? I was going to say, this is the, this, that's the first study we did. Yeah. And it hurt a lot. Like, you didn't No. This was because we used, like, We did the Afrin in like a 2% Eurojet, I think, that time, and then sprayed the back. Yeah. So there you go. Now it's time to start intubating people. <laughs>